You wish furry anime girls were real. What? No, I don't. You also want to see a fifth season of Metalocalypse, but I can actually get behind and respect that one. Okay, you got me. You know the decks that you love playing are bad, but you insist on playing them anyways because you refuse to let go of that part of your childhood. What, what are these? New powers? You secretly love playing Cleefords. Ah! <sighs> okay, maybe now he'll stop talking in his sleep. You guys, in today's episode, I'm going to be showing off my Psyframe deck profile as well as explaining the best I can all my card choices and everything and explaining why I'm feeling the frames, okay? I'm going to try to explain why I'm feeling the frames, but before we get into all that, I have to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. Thank you guys all so much for your love and support. As always, you guys are fantastic. And the other shout out, as always, is to our sponsor, MetaMats.com, made by us, designed by you. If you guys want 10% off of any map from MetaMats.com, all you have to do is enter in the code Eugene versus Jesus and you will get 10% off of any math that you want. But now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and show off the Cyframe deck profile. I'm going to do my best to explain why I'm still playing this deck and why I like it so much, and then we're going to get into some fan mail. So let's get right to it. All right, you guys, so I've been messing with this deck for a little bit, and um, why I keep messing with Cyframes is because I view the deck as like a faster, more reactive anti-meta deck. Um, in other words, um, how I see the deck, how other decks, you know, or anti-meta or stun strategy, will play um, cards like Solemn Warning, Solemn Strike, you know, more, um, or even Evil Swarms back in the day, you know, more set five pass. This has like that set five pass mentality, but with, uh, you know, reactive hand traps in the form of your main deck monsters uh, that you can uh, turn into um, advantage using your field spell. Um, uh, I don't know how else to explain it. So, uh, side frames uh, treats, like for example, treat Gamma as like a strike or something like that that um, does more than just, um, you know, get you a stop, you know, against your opponent. It, it does more than that. Uh, through the field spell, uh, through, uh, you know, the Cyframe circuits, um, you're able to, you know, turn this into an Omega, and then an Omega can rob another resource from your opponent. Um, and that and that resource, and that, that extra rob from Omega uh, could be, you know, a preemptive negate, like another negate, as well as, um, you know, serving the purpose of giving you hand knowledge, because we all know Omega and hand knowledge is really, really good. You keep looping Omega, you can find out your opponent's whole hand, you know what I mean? As long as you don't keep choosing like the same card over and over again but sometimes it's really good to choose the same card over and over again because there's been at least twice now I don't know if it's my luck or what but I've gotten my opponent's one copy of grass I'm not even playing like my opponent's one copy of grass and like I've just like looped Omega and like kept hitting it it's freaking funny uh, but um so that's basically why um, I keep picking up the deck is uh because like it's it's a deck with a lot of potential but it's a deck that I can't ever seem to perfectly master no matter how much I play with race ratios and everything like that so uh, that is where you guys come in I would love to hear uh, you know and uh, uh, see you guys as uh, responses and stuff to the deck profile maybe you guys um, have some suge suggestions um, and stuff uh, or maybe some card choices like anything like uh, anything that would help improve this deck I would love to hear it because I've been uh, working on this for a while um, I have a lot of theories about this deck um, I'm gonna um, you know you guys have just heard some of them but I'm gonna explain my card choices the best I can as I go along and I'm going to do my best to explain um, how the deck works and why I changed everything the way I did as I go along. So um, hopefully after you guys understand what I was going for with this deck or what I am currently going for with this deck, uh, you guys can provide uh, feedback after that. That would be really, really cool because I am co completely interested in trying to get this deck to be a, a lot, you know, as good as possible. Like, you know, I mean, I was going to say a lot better than it is, but it's already, you know, it's already like on the cusp of something, you know what I mean? I, it's just hard to explain. Like, uh, you, you guys, if you guys have ever had a deck that you've worked on for a while and it's just almost always almost good <laughs> you know what I mean like it's almost there and it's just like every time you work on it it's just like just so close that is how I feel with this deck so if you guys can relate to that and uh, you know leave me some feedback and stuff uh, you know maybe some suggestions maybe even find gaps in my theory that I missed or something like that that would be welcome I would I would really really appreciate that because I'm not perfect guys I may be Yu-Gi-Oh Jesus but I'm not even perfect but um, let's go ahead and get into this deck profile now now that, that all that's out of the way um, and you guys can kind of uh, understand where I'm coming from uh, let's go ahead and get into this uh, so I'm um, starting off here starting off here you got to play your three gamma because uh, gamma is your effect negator um, it's probably the best psi frame <laughs> so right up there with uh, Delta uh, Delta is your other uh, best psi frame this one's the spell negator um, and another theory about uh, this deck you max out on these two because you know these are the best ones but another theory about this deck is um, 
your opponent's going to be expecting hand traps. I mean, everyone plays hand traps these days, right? Um, but no one, uh, no one's, I mean, people are expecting like um, Ash and Ogre and stuff, and maybe Valor or something, but no one's expecting like the Delta and like the Gamma and everything, like in addition uh, to that. So uh, because of that, this deck has that extra um, added surprise power um, as well. Um, and, and also, um, no one's really, since no one's really expecting side frames, um, you know, um, on top of that, you're able to um, really catch your opponent off guard um, in other ways as well. I don't know real, how else to really explain that, but um, I'm playing a two beta. Um, I was playing one because I was playing a different build, um, it, um, and I was maxing out on a Foolish Burial Goods uh, because my logic was um, if I, like, I'll just uh, search this when I need it, but um, that other build was also playing a Desires, and I kept uh, banishing my one beta, and it was losing me games, uh, so uh, what I did is I bumped this up to two, and I actually ended up cutting Desires out later, um, and Desires isn't even in this deck, but I kept the two beta because there's too many times where, like, this will um, turn like this will like save your ass like it'll save your ass and like this will turn into a black rose and then like, you, you nuke the field and it just brings you right back and uh there's been several like in, like every single time i resolve a black rose against like a pendulum player or something like that i win like um black rose on your opponent's turn is really really good guys really really good and then um for the rest of the side frames um i play a two driver um my theory behind only playing two driver is that um unless you're playing against invoked there's nothing out there that really like <laughs> Vanishes from your graveyard per se like you know not like directly I mean like this is a light so they can hit it off of uh, invocation you know like I was saying you don't really want to um, um, banish uh, your other driver using um, uh, you know the one I'm saying is you don't want to really other, uh, banish your other driver uh, because like what your driver in your graveyard that you're relying on for recurrence uh, could be uh, you know used for invocation by your opponent so that really sucks but that's where Omega comes in to uh, recycle these guys um, the thing is um, I only play two because you just you just hate drawing this thing it's literally the Garnet in the deck and like the only only way it's useful i mean it's useful if you draw another side frame in the field spell of course but like uh, when i draw this thing i really like to draw the trap too so i can just like get rid of it and have like an actual other use for it because uh, like i was saying like for the most part uh, when you get like one driver in the graveyard it, it really does keep recurring like you never ever need like more than one and like honestly like if you're stalling out like with betas and you need if you feel the need for more driver like how i see it is you're already in a losing position and you're already like losing really bad anyways and everyone else's deck is just going to be better than yours because this is an older deck you know what i mean it is like more of a anti-meta deck uh, so that being said like if you're like having like if you're needing more betas and more drivers to stall more like you just pick up your cards like you might as well um honestly and i and i know i preach against that on the channel a lot because you should you know wait everything out but um and with this deck guys honestly um with this deck goes into time a lot so uh it's just honestly better a lot of the time to just pick up your cards and go into game two or something like that it just is um and then i'm only playing one alpha um and this card's uh <laughs> The thing is, you guys would be like, whoa, that's your search card. Why are you only playing one of it? Um... So, uh, in addition to, uh, to everything else, you know, all the other theories that I have about this deck, you know, you know that I've been explaining as I go along. Um, my theory about Alpha is, like, going second, this card is terrible. Like, you never, ever want to see this card going second. So, therefore, you always want to search this card and not draw it. And that's where Foolish uh, Goods comes in. Um, and, like, I really, truly love this at one. Ever since I bumped this down to one, I have been swearing by it. I freaking love this card at one uh, with Foolish Goods. Because when you go first, this card's great. And it helps you build momentum and stuff when you go first and everything. Uh, but this card gets you nowhere going second. And the reason why is because um, there's like too many times where like when you max out on this card, you'll open up like alpha and gamma. Uh, but during your opponent's turn, like when you go second, you you only have a one side frame summon. You know, what I mean, you only have one side frame activation because after that you control monsters, so you can't uh, do anything else. So um, that being said, you don't really want that like this alpha in your hand when you go second, like at all. Like especially when you have a gamma too, because it's like uh, you know you gamma and then like what does this card really you know what is this really getting you you'd rather it be beta when you go second uh, because at least oh you know if, if the, the alpha was a beta instead and you go second uh, you can like set a metaverse or something like that and have beta in hand and at least have, have a play like or an attempt um, to uh, bounce back and come back or something like that so uh, long story short alpha is kind of like he's really really good he's like the best one debatably the best one when you go first sometimes like he really like does you know gives, gives you a surge uh, you know builds momentum for you and stuff but like he's just kind 
kind of the worst when you don't go first. Uh, I guess that's the way to remember. He's the worst when you don't go first, but um, that's my theory on it, and that's why I ended up bumping him down to one. And I've been happy with it ever since. Um, although, like, there's still times, guys, beta is so good, there's still times, uh, sometimes I want three, just because this card is that good, but uh, I feel like two is the perfect number. That is just uh, that is just my opinion, though. And once again, um, if you guys have any notes on this, uh, anything to add, I would be, I would love to hear it. Uh, love, love, love to hear it. Uh, but that is 11 side frames I'm playing. Uh, for the non side frames, uh, max out on Ash because, you know, this is a stopping power deck. Um, I have to play the Ash Blossoms to be able to, uh, um, you know, uh, stop your opponent from doing anything. Like, the win condition of this deck is literally to get your opponent uh, down to a simplified game state to where you're just beating them to death with Omega. And, like, anytime they keep trying to come back and hit you, uh, you use your other side frames to keep uh, gaining advantage and maintaining advantage. You use your hand traps to make sure that once you have that Omega out, you know what I mean? Like, and you have all these, you know, all of your other stuff stops out. Um, your Omega, like, is, is uh, you know, you, in other words, um, you, when your Omega is tapped out and you have, like, an open board, um, your hand traps and everything, uh, keep it to where your opponent can't really uh, build a comeback, you know what I mean? And you can keep beating them with Omega when it recurs. Um, so that's really um, what the deck does. It's, it gets the game, it, like, how this deck wins is it gets everything to a simplified game state to where you're beating uh, your opponent with Omega. Um, essentially, that's how the how this deck works. Next up, I'm playing a three-card card, card though. Um, I, I still like this card a lot, although you just have to watch out when you play against, like, uh, you know, um, a grass deck, you know, like 60 card decks, because if they, like, uh, snow this thing, um, this thing can only um, be card car um, the turn it's summoned. <laughs> That's something uh, someone uh, got me on one time, because um, uh, one time this was set, and I don't remember if it was set by um, the Paleo card that sets, I can't remember its name, or if it was set by snow, but um, next turn I went to flip it up and activate its effect, and then my opponent was like, no, you can't do that, and I, and I was like, sure enough, I reread re -read my card, and I couldn't, it's the turn that it's summoned. So card 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 can only be card card the turn that it is summoned so that that uh, makes it kind of bad but you have to play a uh, three of it because it's your plus one card and this card um does it, it's really really good ash bait and stuff and like um it's really good ash bait when you activate uh, your your side frame um circuit first because like uh, when you like going first um if you have like a gamma in your hand you can like activate your circuit and then like normal summon card card and then like trip it you know trip itself to activate its effect and your opponent can like activate their ash and you can gamma on like their ash and uh, you know, get, get an Omega that way, and still get your uh, still get your plus off a card card. Um, and uh, so that's just like one instance. Uh, you know, that's that doesn't work all the time. Most of the time, uh, players are, you know are better, and once they see that uh, field spell up, they uh, play a little better. But you can. That's another thing about this deck is like against like bad players or against players that don't really know what this deck does. You can get some really easy wins. So that's like another aspect of the deck. Uh, but uh, that is 20 monsters. That is all 20 monsters. Now let's move on to the spells. Starting off with the card that you literally need to win, like this card. Um, this is the this is the card that makes you play the deck like without this the, without this card this deck wouldn't be anything like uh, side frame circuits is I mean this card is the deck this is the field spell that you want up at all times and that you want to protect um, which is why uh, you want it so you play a three terraforming you got to max out on terraforming to get to it uh, because like I mean without playing like psychic field zone and stuff uh, you have to make sure that you get to the circuit every single game every single one um, and the reason why I'm not playing field zone is because like um, in this deck deck I'm not playing as many as the ones uh, so like uh, Zeta you don't make Zeta as often with the field zone it's always Omega and Omega's bigger uh, but you always summon in defense position so all Omega can do is just like tap out again which doesn't really get you anywhere uh, so in my opinion it was like I just kept getting to this point to where field zone wasn't really doing anything for me or like wasn't live because I didn't have like things banished for it so I just cut it out and like sacrificed a lot of like the, the decks um, grind game ability I would say uh, for a stopping power like raw stopping power to a simplified game state. That's pretty much uh, what I went for with the deck. Um, but uh, then for consistency, uh, three pot of duality helps you get to the uh, circuit, helps you get to like anything in the deck. Um, and then um, this is what I added uh, because this card is freaking lit. Okay, so like um, I was playing multi threader in this deck, and what why I cut multi threader is because this card's better. Okay, like um, so like um, why you were playing, why I was playing multi threader is because um, ghost ogre is a card, and um, you know your your uh, field spell is the most important card in, in this deck. Um, so what happens? is like you'll like gamma for example right let's just say you gamma on like an alistair or something like that right then you bring out your driver then your um uh, circuit will attempt to activate and they'll ogre it um then that really really sucks because now you're left with these monsters on the field and you don't have like a you know you don't have like a synchro summon like it's just it's just really bad you don't have like an omega or something that you can go into uh, so that's really really bad um call call by the grave protects your circuit from like things like uh, ogre um and it also gives you just that much more stopping power in the deck it's just like this deck is just gate after the gate after
after negate after negate. It's just like a super reactive. Um, if you if you play correctly, win style deck. I don't know how else to really explain it other than the ways I've, I've been explaining it. I'm trying, guys. I wish I could just like let you guys into my head to let you know what I see and what I what I still need out of this deck, so you guys know uh, what I'm talking about. But I'm trying. I'm trying here. Um, so um, three call by the grave. It's really really good. It's a better card than multi threader. Although multi threader does work with your um, your overload trap card. Um, call by the grave is just better. Covers more bases. Uh, gives you uh, it covers more bases. Gives you more stopping power. Everything else. Um, and then um, foolish burial goods. Although I will say sometimes I still want these to even to this day. Sometimes I still want these to be a pot of desires. Uh, foolish burial goods is just a guaranteed side frame monster with your trap. So it's just really good. Um, and this um, makes up for your lack of alphas and everything. So treat this as like your two extra copies of alpha as well as uh, this serving as extra copies of gamma or delta like or beta um, in other words uh, the cypher monsters you you want more often so this uh, doubles as extra copies of those um, as well as um, you can search uh, the field spell off of your overload so it's not that bad but uh, the main reason uh, besides the field spell I mean you have to be able to get out the field spell right um, I wouldn't be looking at this deck guys honestly I would not even be looking at this deck right now if uh, this card wasn't a card okay you got to play three metaverse um, Met metaverse uh, is what honestly guys most of the time when I get like quick game one wins with this deck it's because I went first and it's because I drew how I want to draw and I drew this thing <laughs> I can, I can, I'm gonna be honest like because if you open up like ash ogre gamma metaverse and then I don't know delta or something like that or like you know what let's just say your fifth card's bad it doesn't really matter like those those other four cards are really good right um, like it's just really good because it catches your opponent uh, off guard so well like so freaking well um, like I um, mean you want to see the call by the grave too like uh, like ideally um, I'll show you guys like ideal hands in just a second but like um, let's just get through this uh, really quick um, so then you play a uh, three the three overload because of this um, you know you can banish a uh, side frame card uh, side frame monster I should say uh, from uh, that you control face up to banish uh, one of your opponent's cards face down uh, this card is more uh, is really really good um, you know removal it's really good removal and this card is really really good when you're already winning with side frames because you know you can banish uh, stuff from your hand to stay on top of your opponent so this card's really really good when you're already winning so it's like a win more card really good control card um, but uh, most of the time you're sending it off of goods to get more side frames to net more advantage with actual monsters um, that's uh, usually what you're doing but um, uh, what I was explaining a second ago though that's all 40 cards uh, what I was explaining a second ago is uh, you want to open like through card card everything else like ideally you want to open up something like I don't know like you want to open up something like this every time. Like this, I would say, is a perfect hand in the deck. And the reason why, I mean, it's, I, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, or, like, it doesn't matter what the side frame is. You just want, like, and it doesn't, like, these two cards, honestly, like, you just want to see one of your other hand traps. This card could be Ash or Ogre. It doesn't really matter. You just want to see, like, like your field spell, Called by the Grave, and a side frame. And then, like, your extra stuff is just bonus. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and your extra stopping power is just, like, literally bonus. Like, you want to see uh, Called by the grave a lot actually um i would say like um why you want to see called by the grave uh, so much is like what is literally what i was explaining earlier like everyone's playing ogre and stuff right now and called by the grave just like protects your um it uh, protects your field spell from ogre and it's just really good it gives you it gives you that extra negate and it's just like it just this whole deck like literally guys i mean it's about getting out omega um and then just staying on top of your opponent and just keeping your opponent from being able to do anything it's it's similar like treat this treat this how i showed you guys how to play herald essentially where um, you know the win condition of the deck is to you know is to just get out uh, your monsters and stuff like that and just kind of uh, get uh, get out Herald and have all these negates to where your opponent can't really do anything and play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, that is essentially what this deck does in a different way, um, in a more in a faster way. I wanted a deck that um, could lose the die roll. Um, essentially, I I, uh, I kind of ran back to Psy frames and like re-explored this deck and started re-messing with this deck. Um, as soon as um, you know I started like losing games with Heralds and stuff like that but just simply by losing the die roll and it was making me mad so I was trying to come up with a deck that didn't uh, necessarily care as much as it, uh, you know if it, if it lost the, the die roll it didn't care if it went first or second so that is where this deck was born uh, but that is all 40 in the main deck guys let's go ahead and get to the extra deck and extra deck uh, starts off really obvious uh, 3 omega uh, this is like the best card in your extra deck this is what you go into the most in your extra deck um, and it's like pretty much your win condition I mean um, you just you just get this guy out you gamma someone you know what I mean and like tag this out so your opponent does 
does something else you delta get out another one i mean to like, rob another card you just like keep uh keep your opponent's cards away from them essentially and um you know beat them down that's uh, pretty much uh how you ride that side frame circuit i don't know <laughs> i don't know how else to explain it um and then uh, two zeta because you're not playing as many level ones in this deck and obviously like your twos are just like better so uh yeah two zeta is like perfect um and then um for your non side frames um one stardust because like ba stuff is running around they're playing like three torrential tributes and all that stuff like having this is uh, really really good um and it's just really good against like you know destruction period like stardust it gets itself off the board for your side frames and comes back uh this card's really really good in the deck um speaking of cards that get off your board um you gotta play scrap dragon because scrap dragon can uh, pop itself it's a level eight that can pop itself get rid of a problem so um and that's something you have to you know uh, take into consideration a lot in your extra deck you got uh, you side frame players will know um being able to get your monsters off your board so that um, more side frames can activate from your hand it's a big deal big big deal um and then um scarlet red dragon archfiend um i was just uh, i should have followed that statement with this but um yeah this card's really good um it's just like a 3000 beater and it blows up the board this card is just like two it's like your pseudo level eight black rose ish kind of thing it's not as good as black rose but it's 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 good it's a really really good card and then uh thought ruler archfiend uh because um thought ruler uh it, it helps you gain life points and stuff he's not like the best card in the extra deck but like i make him sometimes so yeah he's he comes up like a uh, thought ruler does come up every now and then and like when he does come up you're actually really glad that you have him so a uh, thought ruler archfiend um you're also glad when you have colossal fighter because this helps you stall out and stuff uh, still a good card uh, black rose dragon uh, debatably the most powerful card in the extra deck um even more so than uh, than omega because this card alone can like seriously just win you games especially with beta because like i mean uh beta negates negates an attack uh, destroys the attacking monster in the battle ends the battle phase um and then you go into black rose to boot like that is a, that's the biggest i would say that's probably the biggest power play in the deck or one of them at least it's probably the biggest honestly the biggest power play in the deck is uh, going into black rose um speaking of black rose though um, i'm only playing one um i've never resolved two i haven't resolved two yet um but if the day ever comes where i need a second one i will definitely add a second one um clear wing a uh, synchro dragon uh, because uh, there's just, uh, sometimes i'll actually go into this thing there's random decks out there still running around oh, i'll make this i mean i can't give you examples right now but i made this i mean i want to say i made this not too long ago against something i made this against something not too long ago it won me a game so um every now and then this does come up so you just kind of have to play it uh, ancient fairy dragon because this lets you climb into something else like if you have a level one in hand you can summon that level one from your hand to go into omega then omega bounce off the board you know rob a card from your opponent see what it is um and then an uh, ancient, ancient fairy dragon uh you know lets you uh, destroy a field spell card and lets you gain a thousand life points and then it lets you search a field spell card. like it's just it's just a really good card to have uh, to have in the deck and it lets you go into a crystal wing if you wanted to play crystal wing but i'm not playing crystal wing i'm playing a uh, yazi um because yazi uh, i'm going to show you what i'm playing it uh this card's uh, actually would be crystal wing but i have something better um so uh, yazi um lets you uh you know it's a non-targeting uh, pop so it's it's like basically this is your scrap dragon but for level sevens essentially except this guy can't be targeted so it, like gives you that extra level of protection when you're trying to get rid of something so yazi is really good um and then like the uh, 15th and final card in the extra decks like something that that's like my spice that i came up with um hieratic sun uh drag it's hieratic sun dragon overlord of heliopolis this guy um and the reason why um i, I was looking through my binders i was like man is there like a rank eight or, or something i can play uh, because what i kept having happen with this deck is i would have like i would have uh you know two omegas i would have made the two omegas and those omegas will be banished and they kept coming back but my opponent would make like before the my omegas would come back on my turn um, my opponent would make something like Borlode or something like just it's just something with 3,000 attack that my omegas couldn't get around and a lot of the times I couldn't win because I wouldn't be able to get around like the 3k attack uh, without I mean, especially without beta right but a lot of the time uh, your opponent knows not to attack because they watch you search beta so I kept running into this problem where I couldn't get over big monsters but I would have um, um, you know my omegas come back and I was like hey so I should add um, this card <laughs> uh, because uh, this card um, once per turn you can attach one Xyz material from this card tribute to any number of monsters from your hand and or your side of the field then destroy an equal number of cards on the field um, and this guy can pop itself and uh, still get its effect so in other words this is a rank eight that you can get off the board which is really good in side frames like i've explained um and it kind of raises the ceiling of the deck because this guy's like 3k uh, you can smack into something like you can blow up stuff like this is just really really good so yeah that's um my theory so far on the deck uh, you know the main deck and extra deck um i hope that that was uh you know i hope you guys were able to keep up i know that's a lot of stuff especially if you guys aren't used to playing side frames there's probably like a lot to digest at once like i know it is but uh, let's go ahead and get into the side Deck. And uh, we're gonna start the side deck, obvious as well. Um, three epsilon. I mean, I actually love this card.
Lord of Three in the side. This card's really, really sick. Um, every time I play against Paleo, you know, with this deck, I win. Like, every time. You decide three of this in, and you just, like, stomp on Paleo. It's so funny. It's so freaking good. Uh, so, Paleo is actually a really good matchup for this deck. I will say the funnest matchup for this deck, honestly, is Invoked. Like, it's freaking fun. Like, the, you, like every time I play an Invoked player, I mean, it's it's always a back and forth game. Like, every time. Like, it's, it's freaking fun. Uh, but speaking of Invoked, uh, what gives you an edge over them? Because, uh, like I said, it's always a back and forth game. Uh, Lancia gives you an edge over them. Plus, Lancia protects you from things like evenly matched uh, you know all, all kinds of stuff uh, but then um, Gamma Seal uh, the Sea Turtle Kaiju um, so you play um, I would be playing three of this but honestly like what's really funny is like I couldn't find my third one or like no uh, Sam's got my third one that's what it was Sam's got my third one so like I started playing the Drowning Mirror Force uh, as, as a joke because this is like water Mirror Force and this is water Kaiju but like it's actually been kind of good <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie so uh, for now this is uh, this is this <laughs> like it, I it hasn't been terrible. It hasn't been terrible. But you have to play a game of seals in this deck um, because this deck doesn't really have an out to masterpiece. I mean, you can get over it through the field spell, but it's like really awkward, and your opponent has to kind of play with through that too. And it's they, they don't uh, and they don't have, and like for that to work, they can't have diagram up or like it's just like the thing is like it's just not a very consistent out to out to, uh, masterpiece uh, with the uh, field spell, you know, and a side frame in your hand. So game of seal uh, it works very very well. I mean, this should be a third game of seal technique. Um, and then, uh, th like I was explaining earlier, uh, briefly, uh, this deck does go into time a lot. So um, you got to play three try and guess uh, because this helps you, uh, you know, in time. It gives you, it gives you a 3,000 life points if you have more of a declared extra deck type um, in your extra deck than your opponents. And you play 14 synchro monsters. So I will say you will probably have more in your extra deck and gain 3,000 life points. Um, every single time I have drawn this card with this deck going into time, I have won. Every single time. Like every single time I have drawn this card going into time, I have have one uh so i will not cut it from the from the side deck it's freaking too good um and then the last three cards on the side um because the pendulum's definitely your worst matchup uh, and it's honestly like the deck that you're trying to target the most um you uh, play a three anti-spell because like um anti-spell fragrance just if you go first against a uh, pendulum's flip anti-spell fragrance and like uh you and you just have like your your field spell already uh, up already and like you just have like your side frames to protect yourself like you just win like uh in other words um anti-spell fragrance uh, flipped first turn up uh, with this deck against pendulums you usually it's usually an auto win condition so um honestly um there's a there's a huge part of me that wants to um main deck this card truly wants to main deck this card at three because i love it so much um you know these these are my game boys i freaking love these ones uh but uh the whole it defeats the whole purpose of the deck and the whole purpose of the deck was to have an anti-meta stun deck that didn't care if it lost the die roll so uh, that is the whole deck profile guys that is all um that is all 70 cards that's 15 in the side 15 in the extra 40 in the main and i hope that you really enjoyed it um i hope that um you know this helps you side frame players or gives you guys some new ideas at the very very least um and i hope that um you know i hope that you guys um if you guys uh, see any problems with this deck um i mean it does have problems i mean it, obviously i mean it does it's an older deck it doesn't win every single time and it is side frames you know you are playing like your inherent uh um, your inherent, uh, you know, Garnet uh, in the form of uh, your driver. So it does have those problems. But outside of like the obvious, um, I will say that this deck, like when it when it gets going, like it just it wins every time it gets going. Just about it's it's pretty crazy. Like um, and when it really really gets going and has your your opponent in like you know this uh, this top decking position, I mean it's it's pretty nuts. And this is just like a random hand. Matter of fact, let's do uh, let's do a few test hands. This is all like you know jumbled up. Uh, really, this is all jumbled up right right now but uh, maybe if I do a couple test hands you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about see what I'm going for in the deck uh, so what you do is you dump like so pretty much like every time uh, you open up your field spell and like some stops like you're good so you'd send um, your trap right now and then um, let's just say pot of pot of duality shuffle and then uh, we'll reveal three one two Three, there's your side frame and you just like build from there and then whatever you rip off of card car right now just build from there and like right here a few guys are like well you know you might not draw two off of a uh, card car this is what I was talking about earlier like your opponent just watched you get like your opponent will like sit there like uh, like honestly like I've had so many people like sit there and like not ash like pot of duality and not ash anything until the card car and like they're kind of done for doing it but I'm glad they do that every time and I'm glad they have that habit because this situation comes up a lot where I'll like have this 
like just activate this um, card card and then if they uh, have something I have gamma and they won't gamma so draw two and this is kind of what you're building to you're building to where um, you just have all the stomping power in your hand I don't know how else to really explain it guys you just basically keep taking away cards from your opponents uh, you know keep getting this guy out you know keep recurring this guy and uh, just beat him to death with it I don't know how else to really explain the deck I hope that I was able to explain everything to where you guys understand it um, I really have a lot of fun playing this deck I know people don't like playing it but guys this deck is it's something else it's actually one of my favorite decks and I know I know you guys would be like whoa why is that was this one of your favorite decks it just is guys it just is but um, I would love to once again guys I would love to hear your thoughts about this deck down in the comment section and until we get more side frame support if that ever happens let's go ahead and get into some fan mail and this one is already opened I hope nothing fell out of it it looks like nothing fell out of it. I didn't notice that at the post office. There's the return envelope, and then some cards, and then uh, what else do we have? Oh my gosh, that's it out of that. And then we have this letter. Let's see uh, what my instructions are. Uh, Dear Yugi Nono, greetings from Canada. It is a girl number four YouTube name. Uh, however you pronounce that, I'm not, e I'm not even going to try, guys. I'm not even going to try. I've been a fan of your channel for a while now and uh, finally decided to write. I've decided to uh, send my uh, five uh, favorites monster cards that I own. Uh, sadly, I don't own all my favorite cards. I don't own all my favorites either. So, so it, I mean, I don't think anybody owns all their favorite cards. I don't know. Uh, for, uh, for you to sign. Uh, unfortunately, after searching through my cards, I couldn't find anything to send you f uh, to keep. Oh, don't worry about it. You know how many cards people send me? It's insane. It is, it's, it's insane. I, I don't know. I don't even know why that started, but it started. But I think, and I, I'm not that I'm unappreciative at all. It's freaking awesome. I'm just saying, like, I don't know how it started. <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, who told you guys to start sending me cards all the time but but i don't know that i'm I, I appreciate it but anyways my favorite monsters are fiends slash arch fiends uh, with summon skull uh, being uh, my absolute favorite monster regardless of how uh, uh how crap it is competitively he's just such a cool card he really is um then uh, followed by uh, dark necrofear uh, both of which are included for you to sign i've uh, been a huge uh, Yu-Gi-Oh fan since i was around six i am currently 23 and i'm, I'm happy to know that many others at, at or around my age are the same way um, I mean I'm 25 um, I've, I've never uh, gotten into a competitive play myself as I'm not a fan of the uh, game speed uh, with many games uh, lasting less than five turns I'm a fan of slow uh, of uh, of slow burn decks with um, slow setups and big payoff I just find setting up a board slowly and watching um, my opponent struggle being unable to do anything about it uh, incredibly satisfying however I love uh, hearing and learning about the metagame as well as some um, other formats goats is my favorite format it's amazing isn't it um, uh, thanks uh, for, uh, for um, th thank you for um, thank you for something for prouding a multitude of uh, thank you for producing oh thank you for, for producing a multitude of funny, entertaining, and informative content for your channel. No, no problem. You, if you keep watching it, I'll keep making it. Um, as a, um, un a university student, a chemistry, ma a chemistry major, a physics major, wow. Uh, content like yours is some of my favorite stuff to watch uh, while doing my homework or studying. So keep up the uh, good work and thank you. Um, all the best. Uh, Securia Kikachi. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> I, 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 guys, I am in the middle of Oklahoma, okay? I am not a wordologist. I'm not a pronouncing wordologist. I didn't go to Harvard for that, okay? But, but anyways, uh, P.S. Uh, the uh, silly uh, wee, wee, weeabooish news username was a name I've used since I was 12, and for some reason I just kept using it. <laughs> and now it holds um, a sen sen sentimental value, and no, I get it. Uh, P.P.S. Um, how dare you say other YouTubers don't have female fans? Oh, they don't. They don't. Um, I'm a fan of both Rank 10 Yu-Gi-Oh! and Davinator 1212. Well, okay, you can be their one female fan. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. PPPS. Sorry my letter isn't as fancy or interesting as others you received. No, it's fine. I just wanted to be able to send you a letter and some cards to a U YouTuber I really like. Uh, keep up the awesome videos written April 2nd, 2018. Uh, just want to see how long it takes for this letter to send from Canada. Canada. Well, that is about how long it takes. Um, uh, although granted, uh, to, like, this is the, that's the, also granted. I don't like you know check my PO box every single day. I check it you know once a week, so it could get there. I mean, it could get there you know the day before I check it, or it could get there you know the day after I go and check the box. It just it just depends. But thank you so so much for writing. Seriously, I will absolutely sign all these for you. Um, and uh, let's see what, what so you sent a uh, dark necrofear, summon skull, <laughs> black skull dragon, red eyes, black dragon, and. 
Dark Magician Girl. I will absolutely, like, I will, seriously, I will absolutely sign these and get them right back your way. Thank you so much for writing. Seriously, thank you so, so much. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>